Okay, I'm going to do a little video on the different differential amplifier that we are doing in the ELN-132 class. So I need to open LT Spice. You can do it. Yay. There we go. I need to open the file that I've been working on and I shared this with the class it's my diff amp file it's what I called it okay this is the file that I projected up on the board the other night in class and I wanted to go through it the first part of worksheet 3 I want you to just do a DC analysis and ground the bases so this base is grounded this base is not grounded but I can ground it by um, adding a ground and a wire okay so I've grounded the base of both transistors so I've got my biasing right plus and minus 10 and now what I want to do is the DC operating point. I've got my DC operating point here. Um, and if you do multiple analysis, one of them being dot .op and then you go to dot .tran, the one with the dot is the one it'll do. The one with the semicolon is the one it won't do. So if I do simulate and I go back and say, okay, I want to do the DC operating point and click OK. Notice that it changed my trend to the semicolon and my dot OP is now a dot. So now if I simulate I get my values. One of the values we were looking for was the voltage level between the collector of the NPN and the 3.6 um, transistor and I called that out one so I've got 6.77 volts and on out 2 I've got 6.77 volts I did change my resistor to 5.1k and this was because of what physically I could put in um, as far as an input with the sine wave generator so I've got my DC analysis We'll give it an AC waveform based on what we came up with the other day and see what my outputs look like. So I'm going to close my DC analysis. It's got every current, every voltage from every node, so you can calculate anything you want or know anything you want. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to go back in and reconnect my... Um, Ah. edit undo F9 nice friend I just want that I don't want the whole thing F9 oh well we'll draw a line anyway and see what happens there we go that should be okay I said put in a sine wave that was 0.1 volt peak to peak. Um, we can't go that small with our signal generator in the lab. So as part of this worksheet, you have to, you, when you actually breadboard it, you'll have to go with as small a signal as you can get, which won't be 0.1. More realistically, um, 1.15 volts peak to peak. So we could do like a point six volts peak to peak waveform so I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that 2.6 volts see what kind of, uh, of uh, distortion I get on my output so I want no DC offset six tenths of an amp amplitude which would be 1.2 volts peak to peak and a frequency of a thousand hertz and I want it to be a sine wave so I've got that and now I want to edit my simulation command 
I want to go back into transient analysis because I'm going to do AC. Stop time is 0.02, so that's actually going to give me 20 waveforms. And if I only want three, I'll back it down to about three. And that's going to make that change. So I don't see 20 sine waves, I only see three complete cycles of the waveform. Um, we went over that on the board. You have to find the period of the waveform, which is 1,000 hertz would be 0.01. Three times that would be three waveforms. Start at zero, stop at a time equal to three waveforms, and then sample 10 times per waveform, which would be just move your decimal over one. Pretty straightforward. Don't make it more complicated than it is. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to simulate. And once I'm simulating in LT Spice, I can go down and say, okay, I want to see what my input waveform looks like. And if I am able to clip, clip on it, you see the voltage probe, just one click. I see that I am going to positive 600 millivolts to negative 600 millivolts. So I've got a 1.2 volt peak-to-peak -peak input signal, and that's settable on the function generator. Now I'm going to go up and look at my output. If I look outside my capacitors, I'll have a zero reference in the middle. If I look inside my capacitors, I'll have that 6.7 volts DC will be the center. So it's important to have the capacitors in there and look outside. And what you see is I've got some distortion going on. It's only going so far one way and the other, but that's okay for, for, for the purposes of our diff amp. We could go back in and adjust resistors so we don't get distortion, but that's this is more what you are actually seeing in the lab when you try and measure it. So there is my uh, output one, and if I go over here to output two, you will see it's 180 degrees out of phase. So my input signal and my output two are in phase, and my input signal and my output one are out of phase and output 1 and 2 are out of phase with each other. I can measure these. I would measure the input before you click on the outputs. The input that's grounded is by definition 0. So there's four things I'm asking for. One of them is, is a 0 because you know it's grounded. And the other one is basically take measurements. I'm going to minus 3, 5, up to about 3. You can zoom in. You can get as exact as you want. But this is what um, this is what I was looking for. Then you'd want to breadboard it. You'd want to breadboard the circuit in SPICE down here and actually put in the measurement and see that's what you get. And if you build your circuit right, it works out pretty good. For the next part, we were going to move the simulation from input 1 over here to input 2. So I've got to, and I'm going to close this and maximize that so I can see the circuit better. I'm going to go in and I'm going to escape and I'm going to cut that out. Hopefully just the line. Oh, nice put in a ground so now I'm grounding input one and then I'm going to cut input two uh, I'll leave its ground there and then just connect input two so I've done that now my sign over here is 0 0.6 1000 this is 0 0.25 0.025 1000 I want to make them the same because I said move this input to this input so I need to go in and edit that so I hit the escape key let my hand show up right mouse click and my amplitude should be six tenths my frequency is a thousand time delay and my theta if you leave them blank the defaults are uh, the default is zero so I'm not really making any changes there. It looks like I've got something, but I think I can just delete them and click OK. So now that one looks like that one. 
My simulation command does not have to change because I am still doing transient. And so now I can do run. I get my circuit back. And I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to look at my input, which is now output 2. And you see that I've got 600 millivolts coming in. All right. And now I can go look at output 2. And you'll see that it is out of phase with my input. And if I look at output 1, it will be in phase with my input. So it's sort of backwards from the last time. Um, I can make, make these values, and if I build the circuit, I should be able to measure them. For number 8 on worksheet 3, what's the gains? Um, the gain of output 2 is the input over the output, or output over the input. Gain is always V out over V in if it's voltage gain. And the unit should cancel, so you got to be consistent. If you do one in volts peak, the other one has to be in volts peak. If you do one in RMS, the other one has to be in RMS, etc. So you've got to be consistent. All right, in your simulation, apply VN signal to one input and identical VN signal to the other, but the input signal should be 180 degrees out of phase. So how do I do that in SPICE? So I'm going to go back and modify my circuit, which in my case I want to make it bigger. I'm going to get rid of the ground over here. And I'm going to connect this back up. So now I have a signal going into both. They're both the same size. One of them is supposed to be 180 degrees out of phase, however. So what I've got to do is I've got to edit one of them, hit the escape key to get rid of the line drawing, look for the hand to appear, right mouse click, and when you want to put in a phase shift, you do it by degrees. 360 degrees is a whole cycle, so 180 would be a half cycle offset. So I've got to put a 180 on one of them, but not on the other. My simulation is the same. I don't have to change the command. So then I can run it. And now I want to look at both input signals. So I click on input 1. There it is. I click on input 2. And you see that input 2 and input 1 are in fact out of phase. I can then click on output 1 and output 2 and you can see that they are still out of phase and I don't remember how they relate to each other but again you can take your measurements you cannot do this um, on the breadboard getting the two function generators exactly 180 out of phase means they have to be perfectly in sync you probably can do it but it takes some it takes some extra setup uh, in your simulation, remove the phase shift on input with one so that both signals are identical. When you do this simulation, record V1 out and V2 out. So now, um, I want to make both my input signals identical and leave them in there. So, close, maximize, modify. Real easy modification for this part. I'm just going to take out the 180 degrees. Everything looks the same. It did add those uh, zeros back, but that shouldn't matter. Simulate run. The test for whether or not it's what we want is look at your input signals. And now what you see is one is, in fact, on top of the other. So I had a green one, and when I put the blue one on there, they were the same place, same in phase, same cycle, everything. And so now I can look at my outputs. And what you see is my output is now smaller than my input when my signals are the same. And so this is um, a common mode gain. And if you look in the book, based on what I asked on the worksheet, you can figure you can figure out what exactly the terminology is, because I don't want to give it to you. Um, 
So in 11, we had them at both out of phase. Or we had them both in phase. And when you do this, what was V in versus V out? So it looks like my V out is 200 millivolts. My V in is 600 millivolts peak, which means I have a uh, gain of one half, a voltage gain of one half. And that would be my common mode gain because I, a common mode means the same signal on both. Um, can't do point one on the actual, but you could actually make the signals the same by applying them to both the inputs, the same input. That would be fairly straightforward. And then that uh, is how you do at least the spice simulation. And then it's just a matter of connecting these up. Um, making them equal is easy. You just use the same source, jump it to this base, jump it to that base, and then you got it. Anyway, I hope this helps. And uh, breadboarding gets better and better as y'all practice. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.